We have been looking at design of SAT solvers. Uh, let's look at uh, how to solve interesting problems or real world problems using SAT solvers. So first, uh, let's look at the basics of encoding. We will look at a few simple problems to encode and see, get the get a feel how how one goes about encoding a problem which occurs uh, in some context and turn into a SAT problem. So since a SAT is an NP complete problem, therefore any NP hard problem can be encoded into SAT in polynomial size. That's a mathematical truth and uh, you must have seen in your complexity theory classes that, uh, that you, there are many problems uh, can be encoded into SAT. Uh, therefore, uh, we can solve hard problems using SAT solvers. We will look into the few interesting examples right now and uh, the goal of uh, encoding is, is just not getting to the polynomial size which complexity theorists envision but rather there is something more in encoding. First thing is you want to stay linear. You don't want to go quadratic or, or any cubic or any other polynomial. Uh, it's easy to say that something is polynomial therefore it is a tractable uh, construction but may not be the case. Some n to the power 12, n to the power 24 constructions are just not practical. Uh, at best you can handle something n cube or n to the power 4. Beyond that is just impossible. So this distinction between polynomial and exponential is theoretical and often not a practical distinction. The practical distinction is something is linear or quadratic or something very high polynomial. Uh, so uh, sometimes in our encoding we introduce redundant constraints which are implied by other constraints such that it helps the solver to guide the search. And for example, you know, uh, in the learn clause, uh, you may have seen that the, all the learn clauses are actually redundant clauses. If you drop them, it doesn't change the set of satisfying assignment. However, they help your solver to guide, to look for, to weed out the bad assignments very quickly. Therefore, you, you are encouraged to add redundant constraints and uh, it, it often helps. And encoding should be compatible with CDCL. The CDCL has a certain nature and it, 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 it searches the constraint in a certain way. So you should encode in a way that, that helps that kind of search. And uh, in, uh, you will see in some situations it is uh, helpful for CDCL in some situations it's not. So uh, we will look into one such a clear example we will present. Encoding of choice is CNL. So you may ask why CNF, okay? So uh, one of the fundamental, one of the basic reason may be is that most problems show up as a collection of restriction or solutions. So each constraint will say this is not allowed or that is not allowed or that is not allowed. And uh, this forms a natural conjunction over some specific condition. And each of these restrictions comes in the form of if something is true, then that is true. So, uh, so this naturally has a disjunction in the negation setting here. So it forms a natural CNF formula. Once people start developing SAT solvers, soon they realize that uh, this is a preferred mode of, uh, of, translate, of handling uh, uh, Boolean formulas. So let's look at our first problem. Uh, it's called graph cutting problem. So the problem states that you have a graph which has uh, which is not undirected graph. You have uh, n nodes. We want to be n. It has some edges. Okay? Some and each edge is a pair of nodes. Uh, so if a pair appears uh, in the edge E, then the colors of these two nodes should be different. And you want to color this graph using D colors. So how do you translate such a problem into a SAT problem? The first, in the, when you encode a problem into SAT problem, you need to come up with a set of variables that will describe your problem. So what are the Boolean variables involved? So first we will choose a Boolean set of Boolean variables. So let's call them P, I, J. So I will range from 1 to N and J will range from 1 to D colors. If P, I, J bit is true, uh, then uh, node V, I is colored with J color. So now we try to write down the constraints that will encode this uh, this coloring problem. First requirement I have is that each vertex has at least one color. So we say that for a given i, there should be some d for which uh, this clause must be true. Okay, so that's encoded by a disjunction. 
it's a, it's a CNF clause. So it's, it's very nicely encoded in CNF. So next condition is uh, if you have H V I V J, then you want to make a constraint that the the same color should not be coloring both node uh, node I and node J. So for each color K. Uh, you want to have a constraint that PIK and PJK cannot be true at the same time. If both are true, that means they are they both are, both nodes are colored using same color, and which you don't allow. Uh, one bit to notice is that, that we have not really encoded every vertex has at most one color. This constraint uh, which we have written down allow more than one colors. Uh, that means that more or more than one bits can become true here. Then uh, it's not exactly the solving the graph coloring problem as stated up there. So uh, you ask yourself question, this question: How does it solve the graph coloring pro problem? This encoding, as I'm saying. So uh, please think about it and uh, try to uh, try to find a solution. So now let's look at another problem. And if you place n plus one pigeons in n holes then there is a hole with at least two pigeons uh, so this is called pigeonhole principle and this is commonly used in a lot of mathematical conditions but how do you prove such a theorem what you can prove is uh, for a given fixed n you can turn into a side problem and see if you can then unsatisfied with it okay. so how do you do sat encoding uh, so first you say is that uh, that variables uh, Pij says that at ith pigeon uh, is sitting on jth home, okay, and that is represented by variable Pij. Okay. So the dot of the clause is each pigeon sits at at least one home. So pigeon must be sitting somewhere. So for a given i, there should be one n for which uh, your pigeon is sitting some home. Okay. The other constraint is there is at most one pigeon in each hole okay so we want to check that if there exist one there exist a hole where at least two pigeons are setting so why don't we make a constraint that at most one pigeons is setting allowed and if this whole formula becomes unset that means this is true if a, a given hole k if two pigeons are setting then this formula becomes unset so basically you say not of pik or not of pjk and then this, you add this clause for every k and i less than j okay so uh, then you, this whole thing together and solves you pigeonhole principle 